So when you look around at the landscape of the artists that are out there, you're looking on Instagram, you're looking on ArtStation and, and various other places, uh, it seems pretty intimidating and, and it begs the question, you know, like, is this even worth pursuing? Is this too risky of a career goal, you know, uh, for you to invest tons and tons of time into, uh, you know, knowing that the competition is always getting better too, you know, that's a, that's a difficult thing to gauge. And if you're just getting started with pursuing an art career, you might even be wondering if this is even worth it. Do you even want to do all this work? Uh, you know, is this is this too risky? Am I going to risk it all and then just end up not even really having a shot because the competition's too fierce? And while nobody can really tell you if a if a bet like that is is a good bet or not, because you have a different skill level, you have different proclivities, different skills, different connections, different opportunities than the next person. Uh, I do have some insights into this. I got some really good news and I got some really bad news too. Well, you already know the bad news. The bad news is <laughs> it's highly competitive and uh, it's going to take a lot of commitment. You have to sacrifice a lot in order to keep up. The good news is that an eternal truth is that if you act with precision and you commit a lot to it, your chances are dramatically increased, improved. But that's going to burn a lot of people out. That's going to make a lot of people want to quit halfway through their journey. Believe me, man, there's enough bitter artists out there who spent 10 years trying and didn't make it that I would never tell an artist like, yo, uh, just quit your job and pursue your art dream. I would never tell you that. I would never tell anybody that, uh, no matter how skilled they are. So I do think that luck does play a role in it, but there are things that you can do to improve your chances or to improve your odds. And the biggest of which has very little to do with the art itself. Uh, for instance, understanding the business. Uh, do you know why people purchase art? If you can, uh, if you can answer that question, whatever it is, whether it's a comic book that you're making, or whether it's you know trading cards or a tabletop game, or whether it's uh, artwork on T-shirts, if you can answer the question as to why people will purchase one design or one item with art on it over another item with art on it, if you can answer that question, then you've eliminated 90% of your obstacles. And this sometimes means swallowing unpleasant truths. When I discovered the real reason why people buy art, it's it's not exactly, it doesn't fit in line cozy with my ideal view of why I wanna make art, you know? But at the same time, it's the sacrifice you have to make sometimes in order to make a living as an artist. You're making stuff as a service for other people, not for yourself. I mean, ideally, the ideal thing is to find something right in the middle. You know, something that people actually want from you that you also enjoy making for them. That's ideal, but it's it's rare. That's not all, that's a luxury. That's like a rich kid with a garage full of Lamborghinis. It's like, yeah, sure, we all want that, or we think we do anyway, uh, but it's not something everybody gets to have. When you see an artist that gets to do what they want and they're getting paid to do it, that is a luxury. <laughs> that is everything that you would want out of life. Well, I can only speak for myself. I can't say that fairly. The artists that are rolling the dice, that are playing the entirely playing the luck game, are the artists who never stop to ask themselves why customers would buy their artwork to begin with. And when I say customers, uh, you guys know me, I've mentioned this before. I'm not just talking about Toby down the street who likes to collect comics or whatever. I'm talking about uh, corporations too that might hire you. Those are your customers. A lot of artists don't get into it thinking that they're going to be providing a service, but the artists that I know that are employed, and when I say employed, I mean, I know artists that are multimillionaires uh, because they created art that was of great value and of great service to employers who were able to resell their designs in their game or in their comics or in their books or in their uh, products that they made. So understanding your industry, understanding which uh, way that you're planning to sell your art is going to be integral in determining whether or not it's risky for you. For example, if your dream is to be an Instagram artist, like how much money does an Instagram artist make? I can tell you it's very little. Most people just make the assumption, oh, this person has, you know, 100,000 followers on Instagram. They must be making $100,000 a year. No, that's not how that works. You could have a massive following, but not be able to make the rent. And I know this because there have been times in my life when I had a really popular 
comic book, but I was I was barely scraping by because I did not understand how to monetize uh, the popularity that my comic book had. You know, just because somebody has a hundred thousand followers on Instagram doesn't mean that they're even employable or <laughs> that they you can even make their bills every month. It's if you don't have a product that you're selling that's related to what people click on your images for, it's almost worthless. Most people don't realize that Instagram and YouTube and, and Twitter, these are all just marketing tools. They're, you can't think of that as the product. That's the marketing tool. Uh, just like animation in the 80s, you know, Transformers and G.I. Joe, they did not make money on the animation. No, the animation was only there to sell the toys. And so social media is just there to sell a product. I mean, you know, if you're an artiste, that might really bother you, that might really bug you. It's like, no, I just want to have a popular, I want to bring joy. I want to dazzle people with my creative brilliance or whatever. And that's a nice idea, you know, but it's it's not going to make your bills. And I, a lot of this is, yeah, I'm talking about money related to art and that always sounds a little icky. But as you become an adult and as you take on responsibilities and you get a family and things, you know, making money is going to be important for you to survive. You have to get by. You have to prepare for a future. Otherwise, you just become a burden on society or you become miserable and depressed and you just spread. You just suck the joy out of everything for everybody around you. So don't do that. You know, like at least consider that your art could be a business. It's not a bad thing. And you should do some research to figure out like, you know, is this an industry that even has good paying jobs? You know, it took me a long time to realize that like some of the art career goals that I had were not feasible industries. There was no groundwork in that industry to sustain most artists, only like a small percentage of the overall number of artists that were making this type of product were actually making a living doing it. And that small percentage of people were freaking amazing artists, like amazing. You have to be really good to make a good living doing it. But look at their quality. Can you really do that? Can you can you top their product? Like if the answer is, well, I don't know, then maybe that's your answer on whether or not you should pursue that career path. You know, there are other career paths for artists that you might not have considered that uh, make way better income. And, and in some cases, you almost have to think more like an entrepreneur. I've, I've found that as I've developed my entrepreneurial skills, I, it's become easier to make a living as an artist. So study business, study uh, marketing, study the things that you would need to know on how to run a business. And a lot of the things that you're gonna find, you're gonna reject, you're gonna, for a while anyway, uh, until you accept like how business works and why people buy art. You know, that's the real big question. Why do people buy this? Why would a person buy this? Am I making it available to them? You know, and why would they purchase it? Look at the artwork you're doing right now. Is that something you could sell? Why would people buy it? What, what purpose would they have in buying this design? So a lot of this might sound like doom and gloom until you start to realize, oh my God, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if I focused on one job? Like I could research which jobs actually pay pretty well. Like what jobs do game companies hire for? Okay, well, what's involved in that actual job description? And yeah, you're gonna have to invest time into research, researching the customer, researching why some people aren't good at that job and some people are good at that job. Why would a portfolio get approved or a portfolio get rejected? What's missing from that portfolio? Just like any business, if you're ignoring the wants and needs of the customer, then they're not going to give you their money. That's the same for selling tacos as it is for selling art, you know? I'm just going to use this as an example, but like when I was a younger man, if, if I were a younger man right now, right now, uh, stepping into the art world, I would be looking at something like skateboards or surfboards or something that I have interest in. Uh, you know, and I would be looking at the designs that are out there and I'd be saying like, how can I do cooler designs than what's out there? Like, how could I do something that really stands out? And then I would figure out well, why do people buy this popular design over this other one? You know, for example, just as an example. So that's the question. Those are the kind of questions and the kind of thinking that you need to have as opposed to thinking, oh, I just want to post on Instagram and become popular. That's, I think, just a not a, a well thought out business strategy. I think a, biz, a better business strategy is to find a hungry customer base that's already looking for something and just provide what it is that they're looking for. Uh, 15 years ago, there was a shortage of Metroidvanias and 2D platformers. 
major game studios refused to make them because they didn't believe that customers wanted this, but there were some very clever indie developers who knew that they did because they were gamers too. And uh, it's funny enough, those artists and, and creatives couldn't get work at major game studios in some cases, so they made their own and they filled a need, uh, a customer need. So if you love a market and you understand something that's missing, if you can make that product, you will do well. And yeah, that, that uh, makes it like 90% less risky uh, being an artist because you're making a product that people already want. Then the only question is how do you raise awareness for it? And then how do you easily let them purchase it? And it really helps if this is not a highly competitive market that you're digging into. It really helps if you're sort of at the beginning of this new market. I remember looking at the first iPhone games and thinking, oh my God, like if I just did art for one of these games, like it would immediately stand out in the storefront because there was so little competition in like the first six months to a year of the iPhone. But now it's flooded as hell. I'd have no idea how I would stand. I have, I'd have to do tons of market research. I'd have to really devise a unique strategy. It's so much more work. But because it was a new market in like 2007 or 2008 or whatever, whenever the iPhone came out, like that would have been, I could have crushed that. Oh man. So look for emerging markets. Look for things that are new and exciting to an audience. They're already hyped on this new thing, you know, and it's something that you could do really well at. You could stand out above the, the competition. That lowers your risk, right? Another mistake that I think people make is that they'll invest years of time into a project. And if that project doesn't succeed, then they're, they're, they lose their house or <laughs> they've invested tons and tons of time into something that ultimately ended up not paying off, then they just become bitter about it. So uh, don't do that. I recommend that you take small risks. I recommend that you find a market first and then create content for that market. And if you get bites from that market, like let's say that your, your dream is to make indie games. I, I do think that, for example, if you're making small indie games and you find something that has a fun gameplay mechanic, and it's a game that you only spent two or three months developing, you put out something like that and it's a low cost investment. And if there is traction on it, then you invest more time and money into creating a bigger project. I made this mistake with novels. I, in hindsight, I, I wish I would have just written short stories, just 15,000 word short stories and uh, put those out with some artwork on them and improve them, uh, but release them, release them into the wild and let people decide, let the audience decide whether or not it has traction before you go and, and put in two years on a 50,000 or 100,000 word novel with, you know, 150 illustrations, <laughs> you know? So yeah, man, learn from my mistakes, do small projects first and then until you get some traction. You can also test the markets. So something else that you could do is like, let's say that you, for instance, you're making t-shirt designs, just create an ad with a, with your really kick-ass design of your t-shirt on it and see what kind of price point you can get for it. Create that ad, run the ad, and if you get a, a large enough number of orders, then you could, for instance, manufacture the product after you've received a certain number of orders. If you don't receive that number of orders, cancel the product. But don't spend two years of your time making something, uh, shooting for the moon, uh, when you could have just made like a sample thing that took you a week to do and tested the market to see if there's even a, a market there. Some markets are oversaturated. You know, as time goes on, every market becomes flooded. You know, it, it, uh, what was it back in the 90s? You could make a comic book that wasn't particularly crazy over the top amazing and you'd still have a chance to sell it. <laughs> well, let's say eight, late 80s. Uh, by the mid 90s, that was donezo. Oh, no way, man. Like it was so flooded that uh, every 17 year old kid out there had their own comic book. <laughs> And they were all looking really good too. So that's something else to keep in mind is if you can find an emerging market, you're gonna have a lot less competition and that means you can really stand out, especially if your strengths are gonna help you to stand out. Am I am I getting off topic? I should, I should really reel it back in here. So is it risky? Yeah, it's risky. And I've seen a lot of artists risk it all and lose it all and then they become bitter and then they get angry at uh, people like me on YouTube or uh, other teachers or people who are encouraging artists because there's one essential thing that they might not have realized. They might not have realized that they have to make content that is for an audience. And if you don't make content for the audience, you're going to struggle. 
I also want to say that you should expect to fail a few times. You should expect to uh, have some struggles. You should expect that it's not going to be easy. And you should also expect that you have to put out product to learn how to make better product. The deciding factor on your success is going to be how you interpret that feedback. If you finally release your product and uh, it gets negative reviews or there are bugs or problems with it, you know, if you take that personally and you just let it beat you up, obviously it's going to hurt because you put a lot, of energy, put a lot of energy into your thing. But if you uh, look at that feedback as just customers, who, take yourself out of the equation. These are just customers who are saying, here's how you could make a better product. This part's broken. This part could be better. If you can find a way to separate your emotions from the feedback you're getting, take it less personally and just make a better product for those customers. Again, it comes back to what I was saying before, learn how to make customers happy. And in time, if you keep coming back to it without quitting, you will be successful at it. And believe me, man, all you gotta do is read some of my indie game reviews on Aikida <laughs> and you'll know that I can relate to this challenge. It is not easy to keep coming back after you've been punched in the nuts. So hopefully you get some really positive responses too to sort of leverage that out. Like uh, there's a lot of really positive responses too, you know, and sometimes you just find people will just wanna encourage you. But regardless of the response, you still gotta keep coming back. Refine, improve, repeat, keep coming back, man. Eventually your competition gives up and you're just getting better every time. You can increase your chances of success at a career in art by being consistent. And that's really hard for a lot of artists because we sometimes get inspiration at 2 a.m. <laughs> that happens. It happened to me just a week ago. And don't be so hard on yourself. Don't talk yourself out of releasing your creative energies. I regret not releasing things more than I regret releasing things. The most important thing that you can do to improve your chances and make it less risky is to show up. It is also to specialize. So if there is a specific craft, like let's say that you're looking to get into environment concept art at a game uh, company, there's a lot of jobs for that. There's a shortage of people who are qualified to do it because most people don't bother to research what the job actually is or how to do it. Um, they just look at ArtStation or Instagram and they don't bother to actually research it or they study under the wrong type of teacher. They'll study under somebody who's teaching them animation or character drawing, but that's not in line with them getting a job as an environment concept artist, you know? So uh, find people who specialize in what it is that you want to do, follow in their path uh, and try to figure out how they actually make a living doing what it is that they do and emulate that. Formulate a business model, uh, whatever that is. If, if you're going to, like imagine you had to explain yourself to a spouse or to your parents or something, like could you give them the step-by-step of what your path is? Could you explain to somebody like, oh, well, there's a shortage of this type of content. So I'm making that kind of a product because here's the number of people who purchased a similar type of a thing. And here's what they've been saying on these message boards. And here's the underserved market. And here's how I'm going to give them what it is they're looking for. Or uh, here's how I'm going to change my portfolio so that I can apply to this specific studio because they're looking for somebody that has these specific skill sets. So those are the skill sets I'm working on. Like work with intention and you eliminate 90% of the risk. And my personal philosophy is to never take really big risks at all. So I never recommend anybody quit their job or take big financial risks or take out big debt. Don't do those things, man. Um, you don't need to, just play the long game. It's better to eventually get there with some level of certainty than to risk it all and then possibly lose any chance of doing it. I'm like that with relationships. I'm like that with investing. I'm like that with career. I'm like that with my art. I'm always trying to look at the long game. Where do I want to be in five, 10 years? And obviously there's going to be people who disagree with me and that's okay. This is my opinion. This is my perspective. This is what I recommend to you. The last thing I want to mention is that life is freaking short. You have no idea how short it is. It goes by real fast. And if you don't try, if you don't go for the thing that you want, the kind of life that you want, it's the dreams that keep you alive, man. So uh, don't stop just because it's hard. If you really love it and you really can't stop thinking about it, then keep chipping away, even if it's just in a small amount every day. Remember The Compound Effect. That's a really great book, by the way, <laughs> The Compound Effect. I fully subscribe to The Compound Effect Theory. Uh, every little bit that you put into it today is gonna add up and eventually you get there. 
If you want to specialize in concept art for video games, that is what my career path has been for the last 20 years. I'm a world building concept artist on characters and environments on games that you've heard of and played, I'm sure. And obviously I've got some workshops on how to do that. So you can go and check that out over on my Gumroad channel. I got the link in the description below. If you just like my artwork and you want to own an art book, I've got the World of Twilight Monk Volume 1. I'm still working on book two, uh, but you can get book one over on Amazon in the link below as well. And dudes, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. I do answer art career questions, so if you got something, drop that in the comments below. And until next time, I'll catch y'all actually every Friday now. So until then, a ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.